Super J Cup right around the corner, folks, December 12th. You can see it all unfold on, oh boy. You can see it all unfold on NJPWWorld.com. You can also, you can order it on Fight TV. And I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing now the defending champion of last year's Super J Cup and one of this year's tournament favorites, El Fantasmo. Say that again. Say that last few words. Tournament right. favorite. I like that. One more time, please, Kevin. As defending champion, you are one of the tournament favorites ah, to go yeah. back to back. I want Mr. to ask back to back. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you this question. Do you have any regrets about the way you conducted yourself last year, making uh, just a spectacle of yourself in, uh, with Jushin Thunder Liger there? Uh, defacing the trophy, kicking it, the gold jacket, just, it was embarrassing. Yeah, for New Japan, for buying a dollar store trophy, and they want to, uh, you know, present it as a, as a big deal. And, you know, they spent $2 on it. I ain't going to be proud to uh, take that home or anything. So, you know, I told, uh, I told Liger and everyone in Long Beach exactly how I felt. And, of course... Uh, obviously, I think that the Super J Cup winning it last year really kind of put the stamp on you for what you had done as you emerged in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And it, it was not an easy road for you to get there, but it all paid off. And albeit far be it from me to sit there and say, oh, El Fantasmo is this or that. Proof's in the pudding. You won the Super J Cup. Your former... IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champion. Uh, uh, Kevin, actually, uh, just to stop you there. It uh, it was easy. You know, people think that I've had a long, hard career, but that's uh, that's not really true. I've been wrestling since 2005, but from 2005 to 2017, I wrestled for fun. I didn't take it seriously. It was something for me to do, to, uh, you know, just do something different besides partying on the weekends. 2017, I moved to England. Uh, the, that was difficult just to try and get booked to establish myself over there. But 2018, I won the British J Cup, uh, which was Rev Pro's big tournament, uh, by defeating Jushin Thunder Liger, by defeating Rocky Romero, Kushida, and Rich Swan. Um, I also won the Germany Light Heavyweight World Cup. Uh, and then I had multiple offers from multiple wrestling companies. Uh, by 2009 so it was a year and a half of me trying to make it in wrestling that uh i debuted in new japan where uh as you said i tore it up yes and, uh, and then went on the incredible super juniors best of super juniors run won the iwgp tag team champions uh championships first time uh, defeated the uh, former and current at the time junior heavyweight champion in my debut, then won Super J Cup. So, uh, yeah, I guess it all happened pretty fast, but it wasn't really hard, you know? You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, I, did, I did it all from trying to wrestle since 2017 in three years. You know, you could, you could say I've been wrestling for three years, really. So imagine how good you'd be if you really applied yourself. How about that? Oh, well, exactly. You know, if I wanted to... Uh, to wrestle full time, then uh, who knows where I'd be right now? You, again, the the idea of being outspoken, the idea of being, you know, all eyes on me. There, there's a line though. Don't you realize that? I mean, great. You've got, you know, what about this song? All right, so I'm reading that now you're going to be debuting a new theme at the Super J Cup. What can we expect? Can you give us a preview? Uh, I do believe I posted a preview on Twitter, uh, which was for about four seconds, which went into a nice Rick roll and got everybody. I know. But, uh, you know, I take a lot of pride in uh, in my theme music. I think the entrance is a big part of pro wrestling. And, uh, you know, I really liked the original Headband Club theme song that I had, but I felt it, uh, it could have been a little bit better. So uh, I had my friend... Uh, Tom Williams from Stray from the Path, a, uh, a worldwide famous metalcore band. And they worked with me and, and uh, David Germison, the guy who wrote the first one. Uh, we spent pretty much all quarantine 
remaking it, doing a, a VIP edit, as the uh, the DJs would say, in the EDM world. And, uh, you know, I could have released it in the summertime to cheer people up, but I thought I'm going to wait until I make my re-debut at New Japan. And, uh, you know, it's been a long eight months, so I can't wait for everybody to hear it at Super J Cup. I think, uh, I think they're going to love it. Well, we're looking forward to that, absolutely, because, again, it sets the mood. Uh, the entrance theme is a very important part of a wrestler's persona, and I think it will be uh, it'll be exciting for all the fans to be able to hear that at the Super J Cup on December the 12th. Your first-round opponent could be an issue. Uh, you didn't exactly get a you know an easy first-round matchup. It's going to be you versus Leo Rush. What can you tell me about Leo Rush? What can we expect? Yeah, that's a uh, that's an interesting one because when the uh, competitors got announced, I think me and Leo was the most talked about dream match of that all. But I think a lot of people expected it to happen in the finals. So the fact that they went uh, they went LP and Leo in the first round is uh, is very interesting. You know, he uh, I've never met him yet, but you can't uh, you can't say that he's not been successful at what he does and uh, i'll give him that but you know he's entering a, a whole different ballpark you're not uh you're not just being a little mouthpiece on monday nights this is uh the best peer athlete professional wrestling promotion in the world and uh he's got the best uh junior heavyweight in the world, maybe. I mean, I can't really say that right now. Ishimori is a champ, but, you know, I haven't been uh, in New Japan since February, so who knows what would be around my waist. But, you know, yeah, Leo Rush. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited. I think I'm excited, as the fans are excited for it, to see what I, he's got. I was really impressed with that uh, video that he produced, uh, you know, hyping everybody up for, for his debut at the Super J Cup. Uh, I mean, it wasn't as good as my debut video uh, for New Japan. It was okay. Um, But, you know, I just really like what New Japan did was they gave the defending champ, myself, a 15-second webcam promo, like this stupid thing that I'm doing right now. And they got Leo Rush a film school movie. And then in Japan, they've got the champ Ishimori wrestling in the mid-card, and they got Hiromu in the main event, you know, the, the disrespect that we show new Japan is rightfully deserved from the disrespect that they show us quite frankly. But do you think that it's the cause the disrespect you show new Japan is the reason why they don't exactly favor you guys that, well, they can't expect us to be doing nice things if they don't show us nice things. You know, I had people tweeting me the disrespect that they gave Leo a movie and they gave me a little, a little dinky webcam video. You know, how how do you think that makes me feel to go represent New Japan? Well, I certainly want to thank you for your time here for our little dinky webcam interview that we get to do here, hyping you up for the Super J Cup. Uh, Again, I think that your criticisms of New Japan Pro Wrestling are not criticisms that no one else has made. The case about Ishimori is one we've talked about on the air. But I, I, I think just from, from you, from El Fantasmo's point of view, you just can't keep doing what you're doing. It's just so obnoxious. And I just don't see how it ends well for you. Well, Kevin, that's why you're not in a professional wrestling ring. And that's why I am in a professional wrestling ring. All right, so what's your goal beyond? Let's just say, of course, everything goes to plan and you you win the Super J Cup <sighs> once again. What happens then? Uh, do, you, do you take Tokyo by storm? Do you wait your turn? What, what do you do? Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't the world like to know what I would do if I win the Super J Cup? Because... As I recall, the winner of the best of super juniors gets an IWGP junior heavyweight championship opportunity, True. as does the winner of the super J cup. 
And uh, I know Russell Kingdom is two knights. So maybe the champ defends both knights. Or maybe we have a three-way. Well, let me ask you this. Last final question. If you win, if you are fortunate enough to win the Super J Cup for a second year on December the 12th, will you treat the trophy and the gold jacket with respect? The respect that it deserves because of what the Super J Cup represents. Yes. Okay. I promise. Pinky, right. pinky swear. All right. I'm going to hold you Put it up. It. Put it hey. up. Put it up. Hey, I can't All right. There we go. So there you have it, folks. A pinky promise is as good as a contract in my book. And Phantasmo has said that if he wins the Super J Cup, he'll treat the trophy with respect. He'll wear the gold jacket proudly. And we also look forward to hearing your new theme, which whether you're a Phantasmo fan or not, I'm sure is going to be great. And we will all hear that on December the 12th, the one night tournament, eight top juniors in the world vying for the, the right to be known as the Super J Cup winner. Thank you for a few moments of your time defending champion and looking to go back to back. El Fantasmo. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Kev. You got my PayPal info, right? You're going to hit it up? What? You're going to hit it up? My PayPal? Yeah, you promised. No, you I didn't. Promised. I did. Thank you, Kevin. Call thank the you. office. No, I'm not paying for this. All right. <laughs>